Hi, in this video, we'll continue my look at my favorite things about Ableton Live, and today it will be signal flow. And signal flow is the routing of audio and MIDI data throughout your project. And most other programs use a concept of buses, which is something they've, they've kind of borrowed from analog mixing boards. But Ableton Live kind of rethought how signal flow could work in a DAW, and they've gotten rid of buses entirely, giving you a solution where you can route any track to any other track, and actually to various places within each track. It really is an amazing system, and it, it's, it's quite creative. I often tell my students that a mixing board is a really creative thing if you know how to use it properly, and the Ableton Live mixing board uh, takes that to the next step by making it so easy to route from track to track, make it easy to create submixes and sends and returns turns and also resample and there's just so many interesting ways that MIDI and audio can be routed throughout the program the mixing board in Ableton Live becomes very very creative and I'd like to show you some of my favorite things about that and just a, a series of short little clips that show some of the interesting signal flow that's possible with an Ableton Live. We'll be spending most of our time working in the I.O. section or in-out section in Live today, so let's get a quick overview of how that works. To display the I.O. section or in-out section, go to the bottom right-hand corner of the Live interface and click the I.O. button. That will show this section, which does tell you where the information is coming into the track and where it's going to. It also tells you the type of information that is going. Now, there are three main types of tracks in Live, and if I right-click, we'll see there are audio tracks, MIDI tracks, and return tracks. We'll look at return tracks later. Right now we're just looking at audio and MIDI tracks. This bass track is an audio track. It's actually, if you look in the arrange view here, it's holding a bass line that I recorded as audio. We'll see that this track has an audio from, which allows me to choose external um, inputs from my mixing board to record them, which is how I did record it, or you can actually choose other tracks. So I can actually get the output from another audio track into this track if I'd like. Pretty cool. The output, we have a similar kind of pull down in that we can choose where we want to send this audio to. Um, this chords track is just a MIDI track and we see that its output actually looks a little different. Um, it says MIDI from and MIDI to. Now you'll see that this track looks different than this one because it is outputting MIDI data. By showing, this is, this is showing us uh, uh, um, amplitude and decibels. And this one is showing us basically the velocity of the MIDI, the velocities of the MIDI data going out of the track. So it looks a little different here. And that's a great way to know what is the track outputting. Is it outputting MIDI or is it outputting audio? So this MIDI track inputs MIDI data uh, from external sources like my keyboard here, my desk, and outputs MIDI data to somewhere else. And right now, this is actually outputting it to another track. So you can route MIDI tracks to other MIDI tracks. Kind of neat. While it's in this track, it actually can go through MIDI plugins. So one of the unique things about Live is that not only do you have audio plugins, you have a series of MIDI plugins which can be automated and can manipulate MIDI data um, at any point in the signal flow. Quite powerful. We'll look at that a, a bit in this, in this video. This keys track is a MIDI track, but it's a MIDI track with an instrument in it. So it has this electric synthesizer, it's kind of electric piano synthesizer in it. So that gives us something kind of special in that it has a MIDI from and that it can accept MIDI data and it is accepting MIDI data um, from nowhere in particular, but it's still getting MIDI data from these two tracks and it's routing audio out. So an instrument, what an instrument does and what's kind of unique about an instrument is that it receives MIDI data um, and kind of realizes it or performs it and outputs audio data. So MIDI data is like a stream of instructions, um, like play middle C, stop playing middle C. And audio data is a digital representation of what we actually hear, kind of what tones we hear. So this track accepts MIDI data and outputs audio data, and it does that because there's an instrument in the track. So those are our main two types of tracks we're going to be dealing with today. Now, the one other thing I'd like to talk about is this monitor option. And this one can cause you problems if you're not quite aware of it. But it's a super powerful, super useful um, feature. And this just says monitor really in like audio circumstances, monitor means to listen. Um, like on stage, you have your studio, your monitors in front of you, which are your, the big speakers so you can hear yourself. And in the studio, we have studio monitors, right, to hear ourselves. So monitor means to listen. Um, so when this is set to in, it means the input of the track is set directly to the output of the track. Um, and if it's off, 
then it's just going to play back audio or MIDI data in the track. So if you think about it in terms of other DAWs, an, um, a tra like an audio track with monitor set to in is functioning like an aux track does in most other DAWs and let it it's just taking an input and routing it to an output. One of the great things is if you have a track with monitor in, you can still use the clips in that track uh, to control effect parameters. So it's a very cool kind of cool feature. So you really have to get used to that monitor in. Now the auto option means it's kind of turning monitoring on and off automatically, and it's really saying it's based on your record setting. If the track is record enabled, then input monitoring is on automatically, and if track is not record enabled, input monitoring is off automatically. One of my favorite things about the signal flow in live is that MIDI and audio tracks are, are treated much the same way and that MIDI can be routed throughout the program just like audio is routed throughout most DAWs. So let's check out uh, kind of a unique signal flow I've configured here. I have an electric piano part. Let's hear a little bit of it. So it's an electric piano sound and it's going to be functioning as both the melody and chord changes in my project. I'd like to be able to manipulate them separately though. I'd like to be able to take my melody and be able to do uh, MIDI editing on it, maybe control its velocity separately from the chords, but I want them both played by the same instrument um, so that it'll have a bit of cohesion and so it sounds like there's a single piano player playing the part, both the chords and the melody. So if I look in the arrangement view, I see I have two MIDI tracks, one with the MIDI and one with, or one with the melody and one with the chord progression. To get them to play on uh, to a single instrument, let's um, check the I.O. section and see how we configured it. So first off, I have a keys track, which is where the instrument itself is. And the signal flow in Ableton Live, uh, when you show this detailed view, goes left to right. The first thing we have here is the instrument that's accepting the MIDI data and outputting the audio data. And then off to the right, we have any audio effects that are being applied to the entire sound. I also have two MIDI tracks. We mentioned earlier that they have a different view because they are outputting just MIDI. To route melody and chords over to this track, I went to the MIDI 2 section on the melody and chords section, on the melody and chords tracks, and routed them to keys, which is the name of the track, and then I can choose a routing point in particular, and I chose the track in routing point for both of these. To get this to function, the one other thing we need is to set monitor in. Again, remember, because we want to take the input of the track and route it directly to the output. So in this way, I can have my two different tracks both playing the same instrument. Now, let's see why this is useful. One of the cool things about treating audio MIDI the same way as they've done in Ableton is that we can have a series of MIDI plugins. And I'd like to be able to, throughout the song, kind of adjust the piano player's emphasis on the melody or the chord progression. And I can do that by showing the effects. And what I've done is added a velocity plugin. So we have MIDI plugins just like we have audio plugins in every other DAW. And I have one of these in melody and also in the chords tracks. So if I wanted to say emphasize the melody the next time around, I could go to my velocity plugin and increase drive. Let's hear what it happens. So now I'm really emphasizing that melody. And the cool thing about emphasizing notes this way is it's actually sending higher velocity MIDI data. And because I'm using a, a very um, a physical modeling instrument, electric here in live, which is a great kind of electric piano, it actually responds to velocity in really nice ways. So instead of just bringing up the volume of the melody, I'm actually impersonating the player hitting the right hand, hitting that melody harder with his right hand. So it's a very natural thing. And because it's a plugin, I can even automate that. So in, in playing with these MIDI plugins, you're manipulating the playing characteristics, not just the uh, mix characteristics, which is a great thing. Very often when mixing, you want to mix a kind of a chunk of tracks, a submix, create a small mix with inside your larger mix. We call this a submix. In other DAWs, we need to create a bus and do some routing with aux tracks. But in here in live, it's a simple one-click option, which is great. Let's see how it works. And this is the group track functions. So maybe I'd like to have my drums and bass function as a single unit um, so that I could process them as a unit, maybe filter them or EQ or, or compress them as a whole. To do that, I would click on one of them and shift click on the other, then right click and choose group tracks. It creates this group, which I can rename. And I could hide the stuff inside of it. So now this one fader will control the level of my drums and bass together. Let's hear it. 
I'll bring this down. We get the whole rhythm section comes down. So very quickly, I've created a submix. Um, I love that feature. It's fast and it's easy. Let's look at the audio two and see how it works. If I look at the IO section, audio two is going to group on both these tracks and rhythm section is the group. There's no input sections here because the input for a group track is the group which makes sense. Now, we don't have to route the drums to the group. I can merely use this grouping as just a visual indicator if I was to set this, say, to master. So it doesn't have to be a submix. It can just be kind of a visual way um, to show the tracks and hide the tracks. Um, but usually I do use it as a submix, which is a great feature and really fast. Often when mixing, you want to mult a track or multiply a track, make a second copy of a track that you can process differently. Maybe do some kind of interesting parallel processing um, tricks on it. To do that in live, we have a, a couple ways we can do it, but one of the great functions is just to use uh, the audio from instead of using the audio to. So let's check out how that would work. Let's say I wanted to mult my drums track. First thing I would do is insert a new audio track. And we will rename this drums malt. I'll go to my audio from and choose the other drums track. So this is creating a, we, we, we could say a, a one to many because I can make many of these drums malts and all get them from the drums track. So this is how I can take one track and route it to multiple, multiple places by using the audio froms on those destination tracks. So right now, I've chosen audio from drums, and then we have a secondary selector, which is asking us where within that drum track we would like to kind of grab that audio, what routing point we'd like to use. And these first three are excellent. Pre-effects means this drums molt basically will always be the same thing as this track before any effects processing. So basically what's in the track is also going to go to this one, which is a great thing. And also if I bring the volume of this track down or mute it, this one will still play because it's grabbing that audio before the mixing board entirely. The next option we have is post effects, which means that it will grab the audio after all the effects in the drums track. Um, but if you lower the volume or mute in this track, you will still hear it here. And the last option is post mixer, meaning if you do change the mix levels of the drums track, it will also change in the drums malt track. Having those options, hugely useful and really just not available in other DAWs, but it goes even further. If you have an audio effect rack in a track, you can get audio from that rack and actually various places within that rack. So if I look in this um, drums track, and again, we saw that the plugins go left to right and live in this detail view on the bottom. I have an audio effect rack here with an EQ. Well, I can grab the audio from this drums after that EQ, but before all the reverb by going to the drums malt track here and choosing audio effect rack post mixer. So that's going to grab the audio from this audio effect rack right in this chain of it, but before the utility and the reverb devices here. So having that ability to grab the audio from all those different routing points is amazing. And you can actually, just by putting an audio effect rack anywhere in a track, you can kind of send that audio out to another place from that specific location within the track. Very cool feature and very much unique to, to live. Sends and return and live function like most other DAWs. Let's check it out. To show your sends and return section, you'll go to the bottom right hand corner of the live interface, enable the S and R buttons. That'll show your sends and your returns. There'll always be a, a send knob for every single return track you have created. To make another return track and also another row of sends, right click and choose insert return track. You notice that all your sends are labeled A, B, C, and D, etc. with capital letters. Um, you can also give them your own names. I've added a delay plug into this first return track um, and I've renamed it delay. Sends are very commonly used for reverbs and delays. If you're going to use a reverb or a delay in a return track, uh, set the dry wet to 100%. That will make sure that the output of the track is only the um, output of that effect and none of the dry unprocessed signal. That will help you um, avoid kind of phasing issues in the future. Now the beauty of using a delay in a return track is that you can now apply that delay to any one of your tracks. Now the wording gets a little funny though and I just like to take a moment to talk about it. Usually we'd say I would like a little, I would like delay on my drums, 
right? So in that instance, you're thinking about applying delay to the drums. But what you're really doing in a mixing board is routing the drums to the delay. So it's kind of a backwards language, you know, just a, lang a linguistic thing. Um, but if you, if, if, if you just recognize that, you'll have, you'll have a better chance of kind of understanding the signal flow. In that if I want to add delay to the drums, I actually am routing the drums to the delay return track. And let's try it out. We'll solo our, our rhythm section. Don't hear any delay on the drums. And then I will bring up the send that's going to the delay. And we hear those delays. And I can bring those back down. By default, the sends in return tracks are disabled. This is so that you don't, by accident, create horrible piercing feedback loops. Ableton is looking after your hearing. But there are times when you do want to route tracks to each other. Maybe you want to send your delay over to your reverb. Maybe you want to send a delay back to itself to create some kind of interesting um, everlasting delay kind of effects. To do that, simply right click and say enable all sends. And that will allow you to route tracks or allow you to route return tracks to other return tracks and even back to itself. One of my favorite bits of signal flow in live is the resample option. Now in general, resample means to take the output of a track in a DAW and record it to another track. Um, but in this instance, the resample routing point allows you to take the master output of your live project, no matter what it is, and record it back into a clip. This is a really, really great feature in that it allows you to get audio no matter kind of what's going on. Sometimes you're working with effects that you know you'll never get back, the sound you'll never get back. You just want to record them. The resample track is perfect for it. I'd advise you have this in every one of your projects. To do it, right, in, uh, right click and insert an audio track. So name it resample. And I usually turn this red because I love knowing that that's what it is. Show the I.O. and then an audio from will choose resampling. Now this again is saying that whatever is going to the master output is coming back into this track. Record enable the track. And let's hit record and see what happens. Now everything that's going on in live is automatically coming back into this track and being recorded in real time. So I can capture whatever I do. It's an awesome feature and it's one you gotta check out. So you've seen some of my favorite signal flow things about live. Mainly, there's no buses. Any track can be routed to any track and you have all these inside of the track routing points like pre-effects, post-effects, post-mixer. Uh, the return tracks work like return tracks on their DAWs. Pre and post means before the fader and after the fader and you gotta check out resampling. Awesome, I'll see you next week.